I say all that to set up what I know people are wanting to hear about quarterback. Nikosi Perry still has the strongest arm. That's not going to change. I find it was motivation to me because I wrote that in my recap and somebody went in the comments on the website that I've been running for years and said, I don't know this writer. I don't trust this guy's opinion. And I said, me? <laughs> of all people, like that means I've been out of the lab. I've not been writing enough if you cannot trust what I'm saying on face value. So my pledge to you guys is I'm going to be back in the lab and write some more because like that was, I was really shocked about that. Like, wow, like me, me, your managing editor, Cam, from State of the U, like I, I, I'm not on State of the U enough, basically, is what he said. So that was funny to me. Anyway, Nikosi Perry um, had a solid day. Um, he was nine for 15. He had 78 yards. Um, you know, I think he did well managing the offense. There's a lot of motion. Uh, it was kind of a sarcastic uh, round of applause uh, before the first play when uh, we had two tight ends reset the formation. Like things were moving before the first snap of the scrimmage and people were like clapping. Uh, so that was funny. Uh, Perry ran with the ones uh, and he was the first quarterback up. Um, he still has that cannon for an arm. He still needs to learn how to vary his speed. And Dan Enos was mic'd up at practice one day and he's talking about, yeah, you know, you can throw it a mile, but you need to be able to, you know, throw it right to the guy. And Dollars to donuts, I'll bet you that that was about Nikosi Perry because he had a check down in the spring game and the guy was wide open. I mean, it was one of those running back routes where, you know, you come up and you you option route, you just break straight one way or the other. And he was just open and he's looking downfield and he kind of checks down to him. And it was only eight yards away. And Nikosi threw this rocket. I mean, right past the guy. Whoa, like, I mean, like, why are you throwing it so hard? Like, I'm right here. So you need to be able to vary the speed. I know you can get it up to 110, but, like, maybe you only need 73 on that one, buddy. You know what I mean? So that's the thing with Nikosi Perry that's going to have to improve uh, moving forward. Um, and Nikosi Perry can still run. He did not on Saturday, and quarterbacks were not live. Um, so, you know, they kind of let plays go, um, and they kind of did the whole one-hand touch um, sack thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, he can still run even though he didn't, um, Jerry Williams had more yards. He had a hundred, uh, he was nine to 15 also had 135 yards and a touchdown. But again, the last 45 yards and touchdown were on that tipped ball that should have been intercepted. And Jerry Williams threw two, maybe three balls that should have been intercepted. Nikosi didn't throw any balls that should have been intercepted. He missed some throws, but he didn't put the ball in harm's way. Um, so there's that. You know, I think that Nikosi has a better arm, but Jaron is like a better operator as a quarterback. So it kind of depends on which way the staff wants to go. Um, the real eye opener was Tate Martell was terrible. He was so bad. I mean, he was three for nine for 43 yards and an interception to DJ Ivy that hit him right in the middle of the eight. I mean, like right in the chest, like the top circle of the number eight, like boom, right to him. And I mean, I get that, you know, the value for Martell is him moving. It's him breaking up. A play breaks down and he runs around like Johnny Manziel and finds some way to be Tate football and, you know, make magic happen. But in the spring, when you got to sit in the pocket, you got to make throws because they're not letting you run around. That other part of his game is removed. And the part that we saw was, I mean, quite honestly atrocious. Now, Dan Enos did say that Tate Martell's best day of practice was yesterday. So the day, the first day of practice after the scrimmage and hopefully his poor performance in the scrimmage is what spurred him forward. But I mean, yeah, he missed guys who were wide open. Um, There had to, there was a read that was, um, it was a post behind a square in and it was like evidence Najoku versus some walk on and he was gone by 10 yards and Tate, like he looked that way, but he didn't throw it. I'm like, yo, you got to cut that loose. And I don't know if you're going to expose yourself by not having the arm strength or, you know, what. But I mean, he was he was butt naked wide open and he checked it down for like a five yard gain. I'm like, bro, like, you. I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I I went back and I watched it because, you know, some people did um, record the spring game. Um, I'm not going to say who it was not by state of the U. If anybody from Miami Athletics is watching, we we heeded the media uh, guidelines that you put out. However, some other individuals who are not associated with any website might have obtained or, or made video of that. And so I watched it again on one of those things. And yeah, no, he was he was wide open. Um, so yeah, Martel did not do himself any favors in my eyes. Um, 
but you know it's going to be a long time before we uh get a um a quarterback name dan enos did say yesterday after practice that a starting quarterback will not be named until the fall so this is something that we've written that every pretty much website has written uh but now dan enos has come out cr concretely and said that no quarterback no starting quarterback for miami is going to be named until the fall so you know you just kind of move with that um it was to the point where there's a walk-on, Carson Proctor, uh, who played at Arkansas before Dan Enos, and then he went to JUCO, and now he's at Miami. When your walk-on quarterback looks better throwing the ball than your former All-American player, high school player of the year, in Tate Martell, um, it's bad. Plain and simple, like full stop. So, um, yeah, you know, Tate Martell dug himself a hole, and I'm gonna need to, I will need to see um, marked improvement before I believe it because I've seen it with my own eye. And again, he was going mainly against the twos. Now I know that the second team defensive line is dope. I mean, they're they're really. I mean, Miami's defensive line on both the number one and the number two team are going to cause problems. So it's going to cause problems for him up front. But yeah, you can't be you can't be missing guys who are wide open. You can't be throwing it into the dirt on you know regular square ends, you know, eight yard, 10 yard square ends. You can't be missing guys who are not even throwing the ball to guys who are wide open. You can't throw ducks. You cannot hit. I mean, on a curl route, you cannot hit the defender who's here, you know, uh, who, who's like a step in front of the receiver and the receiver stopped because he ran a curl route. You can't miss him so far that you throw it right to the defender. You can't do that. You cannot. Um, and that's what I want to see happen. Uh, well, no, that's not what I want to see happen. I want to see the improvement happen. So those are Basically, my thoughts from the spring game. Um, overall, I think it was good. Um, you know, obviously interacting with the the fans and well, some of the fans, not really, because it wasn't like a Canes Fest thing. But uh, you know, giving the fans a, a, a way to see the team, especially in Dade County, bringing in all of the, of the recruits, and then just giving a little glimpse of what's going to happen. Yeah, it was vanilla. There was like one little wrinkle here, one little wrinkle there. But yeah, you know, seeing motion, seeing players move around, and things like that, it was really positive. Um, it kind of gives you the foundation for what Dan Enos is trying to build for offense and the defense, I always believe, is going to be really good. And we just need to build more depth, but hopefully that depth is on the way.